Allah decided that he's going to send the angels down to the earth and they're going to kill many of the jinns that were just out of control. Iblis volunteered and Allah gave him permission and they killed a lot of these jinns. They left only a few on the earth and from these few again the progeny of the jinns would start. Suddenly Allah reveals to the angels, I am about to make on the earth a Khalifa. Now when Allah said that, Iblis got really happy. Iblis knows that the angels are not the ones who are going to rule the earth. If there's anyone, there's going to be the creation from the jinns. Allah is going to now make a Khalifa perhaps from the jinns. But Allah's decision wasn't that he's going to make a Khalifa or a vicegerent from the jinns. His decision now was that he's going to create this new creation. Now this shocked Iblis. Because all these years that Iblis had worshipped Allah and had been so good was because he wanted power. He wanted prestige. He wanted to be in charge on the earth. He wanted to be, you know, come back on the earth and he's going to be sent perhaps as a messenger. Or he's going to be sent with a new command of God on the earth. Or he's going to be in charge of the jinns on the earth. There's something beautiful that's going to come for Iblis or, you know, that, that jinn that, that, you know, he's a jinn. Something that he had a big glimmer and a big hope in. And all that was getting crushed now with this new creation. Now, who is this new creation? And this is what really made Iblis jealous. You can imagine his jealousy is firing up. Oh, jealousy over jealousy. Because now this thing suddenly, look, it's like, man, I've been here for thousands of years, hundreds of years, worshipping from one heaven to another heaven to another heaven. I do all of that, all the sajds that I did for this God and everything I did for him. And then all that effort I put, that sweat I had. And in the end, he just makes another one go in front of me and he's going to now become the leader or the next leader on the earth and I'm nothing man, I'm nothing, I don't deserve anything. You know you can imagine the feelings that are going in Iblis. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after he created Adam alayhi salatu was salam, he instructed the angels to prostrate. That prostration was not to worship him but only in order to recognize and to acknowledge his status. His status was raised higher than all of them. So Allah says to recognize that status, prostrate. And remember when we told the angels to prostrate to Adam, they all prostrated immediately besides Iblis. Now why didn't he? Allah makes mention of it in so many places. In Surah Al-Baqarah he says, he refused out of arrogance and he became from amongst those who were disbelievers. This was the first sin being committed against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is it that's stopping you from prostrating to that which I've created with my own hands? Allah says, what is it that is stopping you from prostrating to this that I have created. Do you know what he says? He says, I am much better than him. You made him from dust and you made me from fire. How can I prostrate to him? He must prostrate to me. Who is he? Iblis was very, very angry. He already made his promises. And now what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمُ اسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ الْجَنَّةَ وَكُلَا مِنْهَا رَغَدًا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا وَلَا تَقْرَبَا هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةَ فَتَكُونَا مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ We told Adam alayhi salatu was salam that you can dwell here with your wife and you will live in Jannah with her have what you want, eat what you want, do what you want. But there's one thing that I don't want you to do. And that is that tree, you don't eat from it. The one tree, you don't eat from it. Then there is the issue of Iblis who thought of his plan. He was sitting in Jannah there. He's watching, he's seeing, look, Allah made one prohibition. I promised Allah that I'm going to come to Adam. The thing is, he knows me. And Allah warned Adam alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned him. And Allah says, watch out for Iblis. 
let him not take you out of the goodness you are in Allahu Akbar wala yukhrijannakuma min al-jannati fatashqa be careful that he doesn't take you out from all this goodness that you have in this garden here because then you will be unfortunate you will be very unfortunate if you fall into his trap Allah says inna laka alla tajua fiha wa la ta'ra wa annaka la tadma'u fiha wa la tadha you will neither be hungry in it nor will you ever need clothing you won't be naked in jannah nor will you ever be thirsty and you will never ever get tired there is nothing so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says enjoy enjoy as much as you want the only thing i want you to do is do make sure that you've understood the the enmity that this one has against you the enmity that this one has against you understand it and he has promised he's going to lead you astray be careful so now one day iblis goes after some time he goes to adam and he says ya adam hal adulluka ala shajaratil khuldi wa mulkin la yabla look at what plan he used he says oh adam can i show you the tree that if you eat from it you won't die you won't die at all you'll have life forever and you will have lots and lots of belongings that will never stop you'll own absolutely everything mulkin la yabla you'll have so much kingdom that it won't even finish so adam alayhi salam turned to him that's the mistake you don't turn to shaitan so iblis managed to get the ear of adam and adam alayhi salatu wasalam heard it and he tried again and he tried a third time and a fourth time after some time adam alayhi salatu wasalam he decided together with his wife that now let's just have a taste of it what are we going to lose we have a taste why because he now had forgotten that it was prohibited where do we get this from the quran says وَلَقَدْ عَهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ آدَمَ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَنَسِيَّ وَلَمْ نَجِدْ لَهُ عَزْمًا And we had made a promise with Adam before, but he forgot about it. And we did not find him to be resolute. What is the meaning of resolute? He did not make a firm intention to sin and to transgress against Allah. We found when he did what he did, it was not intentional. He made a mistake. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they ate from that tree. And when they ate from the tree, do you want to know what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَبَدَتْ لَهُمَا سَوْآتُهُمَا وَطَفِقَا يَخْصِفَانِ عَلَيْهِمَا مِنْ وَرَقِ الْجَنَّةِ Immediately as they ate, their private parts began to show. And they ran to the trees of Jannah and the leaves of Jannah and they tried to cover themselves. They were now full of shame they were ashamed of their deed number one and number two is they had to cover themselves and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says beautifully in the Quran Adam alayhi salam received certain words from Allah so Allah forgave him after that what were these words him and his wife, both of them, they said, Qala, Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam tawfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al khasirin. The two of them said, Oh, our Rabb, Oh, our Rabb, we have oppressed ourselves. We have wronged ourselves. And if you are not going to have mercy on us, if you are not going to forgive us, we are going to be the losers, Ya Allah. So forgive us, Ya Allah. And Allah says, We forgave him immediately. Getting to the children of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, how did they come about? It's a question. Hawa, may peace be upon her, she gave birth 20 times. Each time there was a boy and a girl. Subhanallah. They were of different colors, different shapes and sizes in the sense that, you know, the looks were varying from one to the other and so on. And at that time, they had to be married. So how were they going to marry? They had a different law. They had a different Sharia. So as the children grew, one of the oldest children was known as Qabil in the English language Cain. And the one younger than him was known as Habil or Abel in the English language. We find some similarities in the previous revelations with what we also have in Islam. So what was the difference between these two? Listen very carefully. Cain was not so good looking and Abel was very handsome. Listen to this. And the sister of Cain 
was very good looking but she was born in the same or from the same womb so those two were what we call womb brothers and sisters from the same womb and when it came to Abel he was very good looking but his sister was not as good looking look at how looks affected them from the very beginning so Adam alayhi salam instructed the two when the time came and they Allah put naturally in them the inclination towards marriage and partnership and so on so Adam alayhi salam says you will marry the sister of this one and this one will marry the sister of your meaning your sister so Cain his sister was very good looking he looked at this girl he's supposed to marry and he says she's not that good looking and why must I give my sister to this guy why I don't want my sister to go to him and I don't want to have his sister I'd rather have my own sister he's saying Astaghfirullah. but anyway that was what went through his mind and as a result it created a problem look at how marriage up to today creates problems between people imagine from the beginning this happened so Cain was worried about looks and he says I'm not going to marry her now as the turbulence continued they went to their father the father heard about it he was upset he tried to explain to them and he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah showed him a way out what was the way out Allah says instruct the two of them one was a shepherd and one was a farmer who had produce instruct the two of them to give out a charity instruct the two of them to give out a charity and whoever's charity is accepted will be correct now what happened this is made mention of the Quran in the Quran Allah says oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recite to them the story of the two sons of Adam with truth إذ قربا قربانا فتقبل من أحدهما ولم يتقبل من الآخر. When both of them gave their sacrifices, and it was accepted from one, and it was not accepted from the other. The question is, why was it not accepted? It is very interesting. We are going to draw a lesson from this. The one who was a shepherd was Abel. He came with a good animal. And he put it on the mountain. Why did they have to put it on the mountain? There were no poor people at the time. There's no poor to give the charity to. So the plan at that time, what used to happen is, they used to put the sacrifice on the mountain and then they would go away. When they come back, they would see the fire has eaten one or the other. When the fire has eaten your sacrifice, it means it was accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if the fire has not eaten it, it's not accepted, it's rejected. So this man came with a very good animal and put it there. And the other brother, Cain, the one who was fighting and arguing, he was a farmer. He had produce. He brought not mediocre produce, but that produce that was now almost rotten. And he put it there and he says, right, this is the sacrifice. And they went away. So one was accepted, one wasn't. It's very simple to know which one was accepted and why. So when one charity was accepted, the other one wasn't. Listen to the verse. He looked at his brother and says, I'm going to kill you. Now, why do you want to kill him when his was accepted and mine wasn't? Allahu Akbar. Now I want to kill him. For what? The brother gave an answer. Allah is going to accept the charity of the person who is conscious of Allah. Allah will accept the charity of the one who is conscious of Allah. If you are going to stretch your hand to kill me, I am not going to stretch my hand to fight you or to kill you back or to do anything to you because I fear Allah. I fear our creator who has created entire creation and he is the Lord of the worlds. This was the answer of the brother. But what happened? This brother was adamant and shaitan had taught him how to kill. Imagine, how would someone have known how to kill? You've got to stop this person from breathing. How? Shaitan taught him how to murder. So he hit his brother with something very hard, either a rock or something very hard and he killed him. Allahu Akbar, he killed his brother. As soon 
soon as he killed his brother he sat there looking at his brother and he started regretting he started regretting why did he start regretting that is shaitan as soon as you do something bad and you've executed it he goes away once the brother was killed he looks at his brother and now he went away he went to adam alayhi salam and he carried on with the day and adam alayhi salam asks him where's your brother he says my brother i'm not responsible for him ah, why do i have to know where he is and what's happening immediately adam alayhi salam knew that there's something wrong this child is hiding something from me there is something wrong now later on in the evening he went back to the body and he's looking at it and the following morning he's looking at this body again and now it started releasing a stench it started releasing a stench and he was remorseful because of his regret Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mercy on him by sending him a lesson through two crows Allah says in the Quran فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ غُرَابًا يَبَحَثُ فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُرِيَهُ كَيْفَ يُوَارِي سَوْءَةَ أَخِيهِ قَالَ يَا وَيْلَتَا أَعَجَزْتُ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِثْلَ هَذَا الْغُرَابِ فأواري سَوْءَةَ أَخِي فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ النَّادِمِينَ He regretted when he saw these crows come and the one was digging in order to bury the other and it dug and put the other into the ground and covered it. So he says, can't I be like this crow? Let me do this. So he dug a hole also and he buried his brother and so on. And he was very, very remorseful. And thereafter it is reported that he could not really stay with Adam alayhi salatu was salam and them with all the regret that he had. And so he went away. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of something very interesting again, where Adam alayhi salatu was salam got sick, he got ill, he got ill at a certain stage. And look at Allah's plan. Allah made him wish for something. Wish for what? Certain fruits he had eaten in Jannah. He ate some fruits in paradise. He still remembered the taste. So he was wishing for it, making dua to Allah, saying, Ya Allah, I'm wishing for these fruits. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him that at a certain place you will find something. Not that you will find the fruits, but at a certain place you will find something. But he was unhealthy. He was not healthy enough to go there. So he decided to send some of his children. He says, go to that place and you will find something for me there. So when they went there, they found some angels. A group of angels. What did they have with them? They were dressed in white and they had some tools with them. There was a pick and a shovel and tools to dig. Now these tools were new to the children of Adam alayhi salatu was salam. They looked. These angels told the children of Adam, we are angels and we want you to go back to your father. He is ill and his time is up. Allahu Akbar. He is ill and his time is up. So they walked with Adam, with the children of Adam alayhi salam back to Adam alayhi salam. And as they entered, as they entered, Hawa, may peace be upon her. She recognized this angel is the angel of death. The angel of death. So she quickly started going behind Adam alayhi salatu was salam and he says, no, no, no. Don't worry, move away. I was created before you. I was created before you. He's going to go. He was not worried. Now why am I going and so on? He says, no problem. However, he first gathered his children. Look at this. He gathered his children on his deathbed and he reminded them saying Allah will send messengers to you he will not leave you alone he will send messengers to you and messages these messengers will come different languages different names different dialects but their message will all be one calling you to worship one Allah the one who made you and to stay away from the devil and shaitan and iblis and to be careful that the biggest crime anyone can commit is to associate a partner with the Creator. And after he reminded his children, the angels took his soul away and he passed away. So Adam alayhi salatu was salam went. When he went, what happened? The angels had come with the tools. They took the children of Adam alayhi salatu was salam a little bit of a distance and they dug a, a, a proper grave 
and they washed the body of Adam alayhi salam with water. They enshrouded him properly and they led the salah or the prayer, the janazah of Adam alayhi salatu was salam. The salah was done and he was buried. And once he was buried, the angels looked at the children of Adam alayhi salatu was salam and says, Hadihi sunnatukum. This is the way you shall do it when anyone from amongst you passes away. So that is how we were taught to enshroud and to leave a gap. So this is how we are to be buried. Where were we taught from? We were taught by the angels from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amazing story. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a deep understanding.